AMD just dropped a new driver, FSR Redstone, and I'm at my desk. We're just gonna do this vlog style because I don't have time for anything else. It's aimed primarily at RX 9000 owners, uh, and it adds new upscaling algorithms and uh, you know machine learning enhancements and that sort of stuff. AMD gave it to me a few days early, so I was able to kick the tires and, and do some stuff with it. And I'm kind of impressed with what I saw for the specific games that I tested, which was mostly down to the games that they recommended looking at and you know a couple of old favorites. Um, so I need to dive into it a little bit more, but I really like what I saw. There is maybe a problem with frame pacing that we'll talk about in a minute, but it depends on the game and I'm not 100% sure about that and it's V-Sync related possibly, but we'll get to that. The showcase title for this is definitely Call of Duty Black Ops 7, or as I like to call it, Cod Blob 7. Uh, AMD is very proud of that and if that is the microcosm of the future that we can expect, I think that people that own RX 9000 series GPUs are gonna be very happy with AMD. Most of these features, well, a lot of these features apply to RX 9000. There's a couple that apply to older generation cards, but mostly this depends on the machine learning capabilities, the RX 9000, in order to uh, improve things. And curiously, uh, a, a more than expected performance fall off for the 9070, no XT, but we'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. Now, AMD is adding machine learning frame generation, machine learning ray regeneration, and machine learning radiance caching. Although the radiance caching thing is an SDK update, so that's not really, like there's nothing you, the gamer, can use today, but game developers can add radiance caching, which is a thing that means that the ray tracing engine doesn't have to do as much work for every ray because it's caching things, it's pre-computing things. It's an interesting approach, I think, maybe. Maybe we should hear from some game developers <laughs> as to their thoughts on how that works. But that drops today, that hits the SDK today, so game developers can start adding that. Um, AMD said that they expect to have 30 plus games by the end of the year that have uh, the new features, or at least some of these new features implemented, so time will tell, we'll see. Um, the start of the show is definitely the upscaling improvement in both quality and performance IMHO in FSR Redstone. So I spent some time in actual gameplay and I was impressed that I could actually play in 4K on a high refresh OLED display in Coblop 7. And it, like the image quality was amazing and it felt fluid and smooth and actually legit awesome. So that was unexpected. Uh, at native performance, I also try to make it as slow as possible. That's uh, five FPS at entirely unreasonable graphic settings. But with more reasonable graphic settings and then using FSR upscaling, which you can see in the settings here, to get 50 to 60 FPS, then I could use frame generation to push more than 60 FPS. That was a delightful experience. That's what I'm talking about. There's not, you're not gonna go from five FPS to 100 FPS real world scenario. But at the same time, pixel peep the five FPS frame and then pixel peep roughly the same frame in the frame generation. And like I'm telling you, like the smoothness of the gameplay was good because the underlying frame rate was not five, it was more like 50. And the actual frame looks pretty daggone good. I think, I definitely think AMD deserves some credit here for advancing as far as they have, as quickly as they have, but they can't slow down. <laughs> they still have a long way to go. Oh, one thing while we're in here, check out the VRAM usage in, in COD Blobs. Now, a lot of the time we're staying under 12 gigs of VRAM, which is great because, you know, these cards have 16 gigs of VRAM, but there are times when we're pushing past 12 gigs of VRAM. So if you fundamentally don't have enough VRAM, you're never going to get this experience. But the fact that we can play at 4K on a 9070 XT with some shockingly good performance is, you know, a little surprising that the upscaling technologies have, have come this far, or that this particular game is as well optimized as it is when those features are turned on. I also played some Mafia Old Country at 4K with upscaling, and it was much the same experience. 100 FPS, give or take. Now, this is not an online game. There's not, you know, there's, it's not, the game can be a little weird and janky. Uh, we've live streamed it a couple of times on the, on the Twitch channel. Uh, it's an interesting game, and it does have, times when you're you know shooting and you're in an adventure mode or you're in a car and it was delightful to play on a 9070 xt this is a, a a noticeable improvement from the previous driver version that i was playing on uh which was you know a couple months old at this point i did update the november driver uh and just you know wanted to side by side some performance and it's it's basically the same 
I spent a bunch of time messing around with Cyberpunk 2077 and the different graphic settings and also the older driver because sometimes it's like, hey, wait a minute, the new driver is actually slower because we've layered more stuff in here even before you turn them on. And sometimes that was a little true. Like, you know, going from 207 FPS or 213 FPS on the older driver to 207 FPS. But generally that wasn't the case. And so the driver uh, is an improvement in pretty much every scenario, even before you get to the new, you know, ML features that they've added, the new redstone features in the driver, in other words. And I also like to spot check, you know, Shadow, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, even though it's old and, and that kind of stuff. And it, it's, it, it, it worked out fine. I didn't find anything um, sus there. Now let's talk about the frame pacing. In, in AMD's review guide, they said to turn VSync off, but I think that that was like actually a terrible gameplay experience. It was very obvious that the game was, you know, producing a rendered frame and then a generated frame and then a rendered frame and a generated frame. And so it was like, it was, it was a weird stutter. But the OLED display at like 480 Hertz would also exhibit that with VSync on. If I was running the display at 120 Hertz at 4K and doing something like playing Cyberpunk at around 100 FPS, the double stutter was much less noticeable. So I think that there's something that's not right with frame pacing and frame timing, and that's probably something I'll have to dig into uh, once I have more time. Um, it was very noticeable in Cyberpunk, but it was much less noticeable in Mafia uh, for whatever reason. So that is something to keep in mind with this driver, and that is probably the most egregious thing with, with frame generation on this driver, is if your display or your refresh rate is set to something absurdly high, it's probably not going to feel right because the frame generation is not working. You're not getting frames at a, at a consistent pace, but if the display is running at 120 hertz and VSync is on, and you were starting from something that was roughly 60 hertz, um, the, the timing of the generated frames was much, much less noticeable. And so I have a feeling this is something that AMD will probably jump on and, and correct fairly quickly, but it is something to keep in mind, maybe check other reviews, maybe some, maybe some other folks encountered it, could, could entirely be a me problem. That's a lot of words really just to lead into the 9070 testing. Also like to spot check the 9070 and it's like, ooh. So, and then something interesting happened with the 9070. So I spent a little more time digging into the particulars of the 9070. And that is the performance fall off between the 9070 and the 9070 XT with these features was perhaps a little more than expected. Now, I don't know if it's down to uh, testing methodology or gameplay, because again, I didn't really have a lot of time with this, but most of the time when I'm doing this kind of thing, I'm actually trying to play the game and not use canned benchmarks and just say, oh, this feels different. And so moving from the 9070 XT, it's possible that, you know, it just my own personal experience with the 9070 XT was better than I expected. And I expected that to follow suit over to the 9070. And it mostly did, but the performance delta between the 9070 and the 9070 XT when the cards launched, you know, it was like 5% or, you know, 7%, something like that. It was not a dramatic performance difference between the two cards. But with the new driver version, you know, like in Cyberpunk, for example, which is where I spend the most time sort of bouncing back and forth between the two cards, the performance delta can be like 20%. We're using our, our trusty ASRock Steel Legend 9070. This 9070 has been solid, uh, and we've used it for a ton of testing. So I don't, I don't think that it really, you know, and, and that's versus the Tai Chi 9070 XT. The Tai Chi 9070 XT versus the Steel Legend 9070. And the 9070 has really held its own for these benchmarks, and this is the first driver where I've noticed it's like, oh, this is maybe a little bit of a performance difference between the two. AMD also showed F1 2025 with new FSR frame gen. Uh, I, I don't really, F1 2025 is not one, is not a, um, uh, you know, that's not the kind of game that uh, might get motion sick, so I don't want to spend a lot of time in there. If you look at FSR 3, even in AMD's own material, they show it's like, well, when we're doing, you know, frame interpolation or frame generation, um, the shadows and some of the stuff really did not perform quite as well. Uh, the performance improvement there and the visual improvements there uh, are dramatic. I did spend about 10 minutes in F1 2025 and there are still times where like the shadows in F1 2025 are not perfect, but that's true. Like you're gonna get that with any kind of frame generation technology, but it is a dramatic improvement over what it was. So that's nice to see, uh, but AMD's gotta keep going and it's really good. And you know, I think, um, 
they're close to parity with with DLSS in terms of image quality here, and in terms of like weird visuals and artifacting and that sort of thing. So this is this is a nice driver update. PSA, go get the driver update. Uh, post your experiences. I would love to know. You can come to the forum and post pictures, and you know, like side by side. I would love to have more data. I would love to have more information about end user experiences. So definitely something to check out and take a look at. I'm Little This Level One. If you have any questions, uh, you know, hit me up on the forum. I'm signing out. I'll see you there.